something big could be trying to brew in the Western Caribbean, but not all models agree. Is this a real start of the hurricane season or just another GFS fantasy storm? Today's 12Z GFS run once again spins up a tropical storm, but the European model keeps things quiet. In this update, we'll break down all of the model disagreement, what to actually watch for, and the real signals that could indicate that the season is waking up. Let's start looking at the GFS model for the next two to six days across the Western Caribbean because there is that area that we are really watching very closely closely that is going to generally move northwestward over the Western Caribbean near Nicaragua, Honduras, and eventually into Belize, as well as the Yucatan Peninsula, and then out across the Western Gulf of Mexico. So this is what we're really focused in on down here. You can see the vorticity plot there with the color shading indicating where we have our spin in the low levels of the atmosphere as this progresses. And as we go over the next, say, four days, this is going to congeal into something such as a tropical depression, maybe even a tropical storm here. But here's a caveat on this. The GFS model tends to be very biased or convective biased, in other words, and wants to really take any little vorticity off of Venezuela and focus it and be like, whoa, we're going to get a spin up here because there's enough spin. So therefore, even so this is in close range, there is a lot of disagreement. And so as we go to day five and then day six, day seven, you can see that the system then is going to cross through Nicaragua, Honduras, very close to um, Cozumel, and then eventually into Belize, and then out across the Yucatan Peninsula, where again, it could become a tropical storm. And then once it moves into the Southern Gulf, where it's going to be moving pretty quickly, thanks to those trade winds blowing in out of the southeasterly direction. But now when we take a look at the latest European model for today, we can see that there's not much spin going on down there across the southern portion of the Caribbean. And as we go forward in time here over the next four to five days, where is it? Where is the amount of spin that is supposed to be shown up here versus with what the GFS model shows? That is why there is so much big disagreement as of right now. So why is there such a difference between the GFS operational and European operational? Well, let's take a look at those ensemble models to find out more. Here's a look at the latest 12Z GFS ensemble model. And as we can see, there is still a pretty good strong signal over the Western Caribbean that something actually does develop here, possibly a tropical depression or even a tropical storm with a few members going even on the extreme side at showing even a hurricane especially if it can remain over the open waters of the caribbean longer than what is being seen here on the left end of the ensemble envelope guidance also look over here in the western gulf as there is also a pretty strong signal from that tropical system that does try to develop maybe a tropical storm or if not a low grade hurricane depending on which member you actually look at but on my own opinion here we're looking at just mainly a tropical depression if not a tropical storm the 12z european ensemble shows something completely different with not even a signal over the western caribbean whatsoever over the next five to ten days versus the western gulf though there is still a minuscule signal at something developing there only briefly maybe becoming a named tropical storm. Now, here is what the National Hurricane Center is saying. And as of their latest tropical weather outlook, there are no highlighted areas at this given time, even over the Western Caribbean, where we are monitoring that area for tropical development based on our latest GFS operational model. But the European model not showing anything at all is allowing the National Hurricane Center to remain conservative here at not highlighting any area of tropical development for right now, at least. But what do the conditions actually support? Here's a look at the latest sea surface temperature map and the Caribbean and Gulf are sitting roughly about 29 degrees Celsius above the long-term average, which translates to about 84 degrees in Fahrenheit, which is more than warm enough to support intense to violent hurricane production. Now we could all agree on how warm the Gulf actually is right now for this time of the year with those sea surface temperature anomalies that are significantly higher than they should be this time of the year, including for the Northwestern Caribbean and and 
most of the Caribbean running at least some degree above average at this given time. Now, you never thought I would show you this. This is a look at the upper ocean heat content in the Caribbean, and I will tell you what, it is pretty high for this time of the year. Definitely running above average than where it should be for the middle of June with those values that are anywhere between about 100 all the way up to as high as 140 here over Jamaica, over the Cayman Islands, and over the far northwestern Caribbean with that loop current easily evident here in the central Gulf. But now looking at the deep layer vertical wind shear across the Caribbean and much of the Atlantic, you can see this red strip on the map here indicating that there is very strong deep layer vertical wind shear, which helps to prevent any tropical development out there. It kills storms, it tears them apart very easily because that ingests drier air from the west to get ingested into any tropical wave that does try to develop into a tropical depression or storm. But there's one more limiting factor other than deep layer vertical wind shear in the atmosphere, and that is deep layer dry air that we are seeing coming off of Africa. That's all of the brown colors that you see on your screen here that is moving from east to west. This is what we also call our Saharan air layer or SAL for short. And as this progresses towards the west here, you can see how it just takes all that moisture away even from the deep tropics down here where we have the intertropical convergence zone, a birthplace for these tropical waves to develop within. And we continue to see all of this drier air coming off of Africa. However, though, in the northwestern Caribbean, that's where we have more of that deep layer moisture that is being piled up. When we look at the extended forecast, we still have all of this drier air coming off of Africa and in the deep layers of the atmosphere preventing any tropical cyclone formation. One thing's for sure, we are definitely seeing the tropical waves coming off of Africa. It's just a matter of time when the background state becomes very favorable for these tropical waves to come to life and become tropical depressions or tropical storms, especially in the Caribbean and in the Gulf where a lot of us actually live, including for the Southwestern Atlantic. Don't wanna forget about you all there in Bermuda, as well as the Bahama Islands, Hispaniola, and the Dominican Republic and Jamaica. To summarize with what we talked about, the GFS continues to indicate that tropical development is possible over here in the Western Caribbean over the next few days. So anyone living in Nicaragua, Honduras, Belize needs to be paying close attention to the GFS model along to go with my tropical weather updates that I will be releasing every day here at 3 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And whether or not will that system impact the Western Gulf, portions of Texas, as well as the Mexico coast, we're just going to really have to watch very closely with what the GFS model runs do over the next few days. Now, regardless if we do or don't get any tropical development over the next three to six days over the Western Caribbean, including for the Western Gulf, there will be heavy rainfall, strong winds, some elevated surf, especially when you get very strong trade winds that move through the Caribbean like this. Keep that in mind. If you are living along the coast, you might get some minor coastal flooding and coastal impacts, even if we do or don't get a tropical storm or hurricane that develops or even simply a tropical depression. And then areas eventually over the eastern coast here of Mexico, including for the Yucatan Peninsula, the Bay of Campeche, also needs to be paying close attention to this, even so you don't get anything that forms. Heavy rainfall and some rough seas are also a possibility. But anyways, if you found this tropical weather outlook and discussion very helpful, detailed, and informative, Please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel because I will have another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion on this area of interest tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So do not miss my next upload only if you do subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I do have a new video out. And also like the video and share these videos with your family and friends on social media. And I'll be sure to also leave a comment or reply to you all too, and even share your comment maybe in my next video. But otherwise, thank you all for watching and I'll see you back here tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time.